This is Dr. Dennis Acuzzo, California Community Property. Now the first thing I want to point out to you is that it, it's imperative that you be able to rattle off the basic definitions. Separate property, all property acquired before marriage, and that's all over the country, in any state, not just California. Separate properties, property acquired before marriage. In California, after permanent separation, it's a minority rule, after permanent separation. So as soon as a permanent separation is effectuated, at that point in time, everything the spouses or the estranged spouses earn are their own separate property. And then also by gift and inheritance and gift and inheritance, that's all over the country as well. So basically know what separate property is, know what community property is. The basic idea is community property, property acquired during the existence of the marriage by the skill and effort of the spouses. So you remember that skill and effort. You don't have to put that in in the definition that you write down for the bar examiners, but keep it in your head. And of course it is valid, you could use it. Skill and effort during the existence of the marriage. That's the whole idea. The marriage is in a way like a partnership. And the idea though in the community is to earn money and to build a community. Imagine you could have a partnership like that. And remember, anything any one of the partners earns is going to be uh, in the partnership. It's not going to be the personal property of the partnership. Same in a community. Anything earned by the acquiring spouses, by the skill and effort during the existence of the marriage is community property. Now, that's easy. I also want you to learn the definition of quasi-community property. And I'll tell you, a lot of people get this wrong. So, you're going to get a quasi-community property question when the first sentence says, um, uh, Herb and Winnie met in Illinois, a non-community property state. It doesn't have to be Illinois, but they'll say, give you a state, say it's a non-community property state. Bingo, that raises the potential issue of quasi-community property. Quasi-community property is all property acquired by a married couple in another jurisdiction. And here's your key. It would have been community property had the spouses been domiciled in California. So, the first step in your analysis is to show that the asset would have been community property had they been domiciled in California. And, you know, if it's acquired by the skill and effort during the existence of the marriage, then it would have been community property. Wages, salaries, it would have been community property by skill and effort. All right, now, once you determine that it would have been community property had they been domiciled in California, we call it quasi-community property. However, however, the property is going to remain the separate property of the acquiring spouse. So quasi-community property remains the separate property of the acquiring spouse, except at death dissolution and an action by creditors. So a lot of people get that wrong and, and they say, well, quasi-community property, that's, that's the same thing as community property, only a little bit different. No, no, you gotta be precise. You, you're gonna be a practicing attorney, be precise with your definitions. And marital property is property acquired during a void or voidable marriage. Uh, it's your putative spouse situation. We have a putative marriage, a void or voidable marriage, where one of the spouses has a good faith belief in the existence of the marriage. So that's the main thing that you need to worry about. Some other rules. One I want you to keep in your head. Form of title is not conclusive. Interest is the key. So husband using his salary or a bonus takes that bonus and without telling his wife buys some real property and takes title in his name alone. So it's the effect. Form of title is not conclusive in California. Interest is the key. 
So that means that we would trace. Well, how did he get that money? He got that money by working. When was he working? During the marriage. So that salary or bonus or whatever you want to call it, that's community. And what happened? He, we trace it. He used that community to buy the real property. Therefore, the interest is community. And that real property would, even though it's titled in husband's name alone, will be a community asset. Now, along those same lines, I want you to pay attention to the whole issue of contributions. They're two big hypotheticals, and you've got to distinguish these two hypotheticals. It's the Lucas hypothetical and the Moore hypothetical. The Lucas hypothetical pertains to a separate property contribution to jointly titled property. And the rule is going to be at dissolution, the separate property would be entitled to dollar for dollar reimbursement. No interest, no appreciation, dollar for dollar reimbursement. The more rule, by contrast, pertains to a separate property titled property, so property titled and separate property, where community funds are used to pay down the mortgage. And the rule is that the community is going to be entitled to its pro rata share of the appreciation plus its contribution. Now, any competent outline will elaborate on this. It's all in power law, and it's all in the patterns that we present in our essays and our model essays in power law. And you, can you don't have to get power law. You can find them elsewhere. It needs some model essays. Another thing that they'll cover in there is the issue of a professional degree. You should know that. What is a professional degree? Well, it's not property in the real sense. And so therefore, a professional degree, professional license, remains the separate property of the acquiring spouse. The issue will be reimbursement for educational expenses. Now, when you do a California community property hypo, you could begin your essay with the basic definitions all up front. Now, that's not something you will always do. Putting down a bunch of definitions normally won't get you anywhere on the California bar. That's expressed in their instructions. You don't get any points for writing down law. You get points for demonstrating your ability to apply the law to the facts to come to a logical conclusion. In California community property by tradition, it's okay to begin up front with your rules if you want. I don't, you don't have to, but a lot of people will and it might not be a bad idea to really learn those rules and be able to put them down, put them down accurately. Find that particularly out-of-state attorneys, out-of-state attorneys, listen up. You can imply the law and you know the law and you do good fact analysis, but you're not writing down the rules. So we want you to write down the rules.